of a time. God. Oh, God. Dear Father in heaven, I don't understand anything since the past few weeks. I don't understand since March. Lord, you've called me something, called us, excuse me, us, something to greater than we've ever seen. Holy Spirit, give the messages. We're just here. We trust you, we love you. May my, may the praises of my lips be acceptable in your sight, a rock and my redeemer. Father, Jesus, whatever is being said of your word, may it, it implant and break forth and produce fruit. And if whatever is not of you, Jesus, sweep it away as chaff. We love you and we give to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. So, we are going into Shavuot, or Pentecost. Hallelujah, Jesus. I just want to praise you right now. Woo, Jesus. Woo, glory. Thank you, thank you. Woo. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You said that when the offering is there, you will bring the fire. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, because you took 12 men and you turned the world upside down. And that's all it takes. In Jesus' name, amen. That was uh, glorious. So, tomorrow, tonight, is starting of Pentecost, Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks. The beginning, you'd say it would be the first day of the eighth week. The, the first day of the new beginning. It is when the Holy Spirit fell. But here's the thing. How can the Holy Spirit fall if there's no ready vessel or offering to consume? Go to Genesis 22. Genesis 22. So, Leanne, my, my wife, died, and I remember coming uh, home from work one day, and I said uh, that, I was like, we're going to have worship, open our worship on Shavuot, on Pentecost. And, uh, and she told me, yep, we are. I'm like, how do you know? Because the Lord told me. Like, wow. And it would have been six weeks after her recovery. She's home, safely. And I remember kneeling at her casket at Veterans Memorial. And I said, Lord, here's the offering. Now please bring the fire. Guys, you're not ready. We, excuse me, we are not ready to receive. God is so ready to give more than we are ready to receive. You don't have a vessel prepared unless you've totally emptied yourself of yourself before Him. So, Genesis 22, after these things, starting in verse 1, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, now let me just stop right there. If you get a call from the Lord and He says, Child, and you don't say hineni. Here am I. That's what it is in the Hebrew. Hineni. Here am I. Hineni. It's the combination of two words. Hineni. Okay. Behold, here am I. It's literally, well, not just here am I. It, it's such a powerful word. Behold, look at me. Yoo 
It's like, I love the movie Shrek, okay, uh, the, the, the section is like, okay, so we gotta go to this castle, who's gonna take, take me, and the donkey's in the back, pick me, pick me, pick me, I'm over here, and Shrek's like, anybody else? Me, me, he didn't want to pick him, Abraham said, look at me, I'm right here, because that's what God wants, Matthew 22, Many are called, few are chosen. Take your son, he said, your only son, whom you love. Go to the land of Moriah, or Moriah. In Hebrew, it's Moriah. Yahweh is your teacher. And offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. Excuse me. You want me to take the promise you gave me. Lord, you gave me this. It wasn't Ishmael. It was Isaac, your son. Okay, that means of your flesh. Your only son. The very thing you have. The one you love and adore. The one you put your hope and trust in. The promise, because that was, that was the promise. That through your seed, Isaac, a nation will form. That was the promise from years ago. Go into this area. I don't even know where he's going. And offer him there as a burnt offering. Take him there to be totally consumed. Burnt. I mean... I will tell you the mountain. I will tell you the mountain. So, okay, you want me to go somewhere? I don't even know where I'm going. You want me to do what? To who? So, Abraham started asking questions. Is that what your Bible says? No. So, Abraham started debating. Well, but God, I... Abraham took his time and waited a few weeks. Abraham took his son and went to God. Got up early. You get a call from God. Why are you waiting? Y'all know what you need to what you need to do. Somehow you've gotten a call from God and you're waiting. Somehow He's telling you to obey and you're not doing it. Somehow He's saying, "Child, I am waiting." to pour out heaven for you. But I, but you are in the way. Get out of your way. I'm there. I'm a gentleman. I will not push my agenda. But I can't use you. Get out of the way. God told me the very same words. Son, you've trusted in your wife a lot. Get out of the way. And trust her to me. I love my wife. I loved her dearly. He said, get out of the way. Get out of the way. And entrust her into me. My mercies are very great. Abraham had the same thing. So he got up early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took with him two of his young men and his son Isaac. Now, this is a lonely road. I'm sorry. People will not understand. What? I am so sorry, you will get persecuted. People will not understand what you're about to do. You guys are being called on a mission. God is sending you somewhere, calling you to do something, calling you to task, and you're like, God, you, you've got to be kidding me. You want me to do what? <laughs> Y'all know what it is. In your spirit, you do. I don't know what it is, but God does. That's why he's, he's speaking this message right now. You're hearing a message from the Lord. He's speaking to your spirits right now. And you're like, oh God, what in the world could this be? Stay, he says to his young men, verse 5, stay here with the donkey, the boy, and I will go over there to worship. And, we'll come, and we will come back to you. We will come back to you. Notice the faith he has. There you go. Out of the mouths of infants and babes. He said he knew that his son would come back. Abraham fully believed God would raise him from the dead. 
He fully trusted. Abraham took the wood, which is the son of humanity, for the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac. In his hand, he took the fire, which is the sign of the Holy Spirit. It can be. And a sacrificial knife, which can also be a cross. And the two of them walked together. Then Isaac spoke to his father. There's another calling. Isaac said, my father, Avi, my father. And he replied, where am I? My son. Behold, here am I. I'm your willing father. Isaac said, the fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, Yahweh Yireh. God will see to it. God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them walked on together. We were driving in Ohio, uh, from Orlando, excuse me, Trimble Park, to our congregation that night. It was a Please? very difficult night. Please? Last night of worship in Orlando. Sorry. Ooh. And the kids asked, they were young, they said, Mommy, how are we going to get back to our park? It was, must have been 40 miles away, and we had no more gas money. We had enough to get there. My wife, full of faith, said, Honey, we have enough to get there, and God will see to it on the way back. Not only that, well, what ended up happening that night, people, we must have had a couple hundred dollars on our, car, on our seat in the car. Somebody just put money in the driver's seat. And then God said, go back Sunday. What? And we did. So, when they arrived at the place that God had told them about, Abraham built the altar there and arrange the wood. Listen, y'all can say in your heart everything and, and anything. Oh yes, God, I love you, I give it up to you. Go ahead and now build it. Go ahead and build that altar. Get out there and start constructing the very thing that is gonna be the death of your promise. That is the very thing that you're gonna offer up. Go ahead and start building it. You wanna act in faith? You wanna follow God all the way? You wanna really live out the scripture and say, we walk by faith and not by sight? You go ahead and do the thing that's gonna destroy you. And you go and step out into that water and you fall. Go ahead. And do it. There's a phrase in, in, in the world, put your money where your mouth is. You really say it? Do it. I can't tell you some of the things that I've experienced the last week. Some of y'all may have heard I you know, got remarried to a beautiful, beautiful girl, Esther. It was a gift from God. He, he told me specifically all the, all the events that have happened. Random people later on in the back and said, I've had dreams about you, this and this and this. What's going on? <laughs> I mean, I don't even have time to tell all the stories. But God said, go ahead and do it. And I said, you want me to? One of my kids said, Daddy, I was just planning on preaching in, in Amish country. And, and uh, one of the kids said, Daddy, are you going to come back with Esther from Ohio? I fell on my face. I said, Lord, this is not my plan. This is not my plan. This is not my plan. No, 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 no. He said, it may not be yours, but it's mine. And then four different people independently gave the same word that I was given because I said so. All the haste, all the different organizing. It was like, Lord, why? Because I said so. This was a destruction against my flesh. This is not what I would have chosen. He says, go ahead and build the altar. Go ahead and buy the plane ticket. The extra plane ticket. Go ahead and go there. Go ahead and do the very thing that will destroy you. Go ahead and do it. He bound his son Isaac and placed him on the altar on the top of the wood. Go ahead and drive 
and go ahead, take vows. Oh, God. <laughs> Folks, I'm not puffing myself up, God forbid. This is, these are the only, these are only examples. I'm an open book, guys. I've experienced countless numbers of persons <laughs> and just filth against my family. Me. I'll do it again because Jesus is worthy. Then Abraham reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. Go ahead and get to the very end, fully believing. Not that God's going to stop your hand, but that God's going to raise him from the dead. you got to carry out the fullness of the plan that God has shown you. You are going to come to that point where you're like, Lord, I'm literally going to fly off the edge. And go ahead. Fly. Fully trusting God's going to catch you. Fully trusting you're going to sprout wings. Fully trusting that you have a parachute. You do not know what he's going to do. you got to fully trust that he is literally... Then you're like, well, I just got hands below that cliff. I'm not advocating running off a cliff. I'm not saying that. Okay. I'm trying to give a visual understanding. Give you guys a visual. It will seem utterly preposterous. But since when have we served a God that is confined to a box? Since when have we served a predictable God? He hasn't changed. His attributes haven't changed. The way he... Displays those attributes. Ooh, that's his creative aspect. That's how he exercises his creativity. So, but the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven. Now, this is the what we call a Christophany, pre-incarnate Christ. This is too much sugar. Abraham, Abraham. He didn't call him once. He called him twice to say, "You." He's bringing an emphasis. He's saying, really, really, I am really calling you. He said, behold, the handmaiden, the handmaid or handmaiden of the Lord. I did what you asked. He said, do not lay a hand on the boy or do anything to him. Now the end of the Lord, for now I know. Now I know. You got to come to the point of total destruction. And say, you know what? Come fire or high water, I'm going to go out with a bang. It is the three Hebrew children who say, who said, Lord, he said to Nebuchadnezzar, whether it seems right or not to serve you, O king, we will not bow to you. Uh, no, it's okay. He said, Either God will save us from the fire, or we will burn. Either way, we're not going to bow to you. They were respectful, but said we can't. There are some that fully burn. There are those who fully die. Hebrews 11 shows us that. Some were sodden in two. Some were put to death. Some were stoned. Some were hanged. They refused. They refused release. They refused comfort. So Abraham was shown. He said, for now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your only son from me. I know where you fear. I know where your loyalty lies. Where's your loyalty? Where are your loyalties? How bad do you love him? How bad do you want him? You willing to die for him? You willing for your rights to be destroyed? You willing to give everything for him? Because that's what he wants. He wants your whole heart. Anytime you're like, well, they shouldn't do that to me. God says, yeah, give me that. Give me that offense. Says, well, uh, uh, yeah, I'd go anywhere, but yeah, I had a, uh, somebody I worked with. She says, everything after but is Volstein. Because you just cancel everything you just said. You need to say, yes, sir. You fully go. Because it is an offering to the king. And when that happens, as we saw with 
In the book of Acts, the disciples, they said, Lord, here we are. There's nothing left of us. And he said, great, let me pour out upon you. And he poured out the fire of the Holy Spirit. And the world was never the same. We're not poured out for him. We're not. We can't even, you know, we, we heard agony earlier from Leonard Ravenhill. Me first. We're still a bunch of children. And we don't want the Lord. We don't. We don't even know the depths of our selfishness. Oh Lord, show us the depths of our selfishness because we want you. Help us to trust you because we don't know where we are. Oh God, we want to go all the way, but we can't do it on our own. You've got to do it. Guys, don't doubt the Holy Spirit. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Unbelief is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit to say, Oh, well, God couldn't possibly tell me to do that. Abraham, I mean, if, if Abraham said, Oh, God couldn't possibly tell me to sacrifice the very promise he gave me, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. God couldn't possibly tell me to leave my family. Sorry, you just doubted him. Unbelief. Really? Did, can you put God in a box? Don't even try. Don't put it past him. God couldn't possibly, Jesus couldn't possibly be, be the Messiah. I'm Jewish. I said that back 20 years ago. <laughs> Nate Carr, I'll never forget it. He was an Olympic wrestler. He said, don't limit God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for Nate Carr who preached the gospel to me. Don't limit what God can do, lest he be found guilty of unbelief. <laughs> Dear Father in heaven, we love you. We thank you. Abba, call us out. Call us to worship you, to follow you, no matter what the cost is, because we get you. We get you. You and only you. Help us, O oh Lord. We need you. Yes, we do. Abba, get rid of our human affections. Lord, we lay them down right now. We lay, we lay down the very things that hold us here to this earth, and I'm sorry. Jesus, I confess to myself, because I know I've had human affections, where I said, Lord, I don't understand this, why these people say, you know, we're, we're done. Lord, you're good, and it's only you, because it's not about us. You're taking us places that teach us about your nature, and it's not us to understand. It's not given to us to understand. It's only given to us to obey. Oh, God, all for grace to trust you more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. How I trust him. Oh, Lord, help us to walk and obey. There is no other way to be happy but to trust and obey. Lord Jesus, we love you and we bless you. We give to you this time. And we thank you. Prepare our hearts for Shavuot, for tomorrow, to know what we ought to do in this next season of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.